King Air 704, ready to copy IFR. King Air 704 is cleared to Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha as filed. Expect departure runway 16 right. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Expect higher clearances two minutes after departure. Departure on 119.6, Squawk 6516. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at some of my favorite mods uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've tried to make this video a few times and chop it up and make it cute and precise and it's just a lot of information. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to very briefly in the shortest amount of time possible, I'm going to go over my top 10 mods for immersion and I'll give you a quick rundown on all of them. I'll leave a link in the description below. And then if you guys have any questions or you want a specific tutorial or you take the information you learn here today and you can't find a YouTube video to kind of help you get the rest of the way there, let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. There will also be a link to my Discord in there, which you will need to get a couple of these files uh, that aren't readily available out there on the Internet. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm in the Analog King Air today. I'm going to go ahead and start my engine run up and I will show you some of the things that I use on a daily basis as we go through this and see how it works. So I've got power on, everything is off. We're going to go ahead and start. Don't worry, this is not a King Air tutorial. So as I'm starting the engine, I'm going to use Point Magnifier 2. Now this little guy is just almost basically a widget that will allow you to zoom in on things and take a peek. And why that's super nice and handy on the King Air as we come up to 13%, we'll go ahead and introduce fuel, is over here on the other side of the yoke, there are some very difficult to see gauges. And this little tool makes it so nice to check on circuit breakers, the stuff hiding over here that normally you kind of have to come get over and get an angle and take a peek at. This thing is a time saver and, and it also kind of adds some immersion because you're not quite as clunky in the cockpit. So, all right. I've got my notepad here and everybody's got, you know, a flight plan or discord or something they're trying to do. If they're on single monitor, it becomes a huge pain because as soon as you click on your cockpit to do something, you lose whatever was in front. Well, there's a very simple solution for that called desk pins and desk pins just runs down here in the system tray, uh, tray, excuse me. You right click, enter pin mode, and now that stays on top no matter what. Once you're done with it, you just hover over the little push pin there. You see we get the X indicator. You click on it, and it goes away. All right, so next in the nine spot, I've got environmental scenery. Uh, first up would be a program called USA Birds, which you can see here because I'm I think below 1500 AGL, there's a lot, a lot of birds around. Uh, the lower you are, the more dense they seem to be. Uh, but it's just a fantastic app. Uh, Southco made a, a birds app before that was like a group of pigeons that were just kind of all flocked together. It looked nothing like this at all. And I just absolutely love this app. I think it's less than 10 bucks on Sim Market. And I have not taken it out of my community folder since the day I got it. So anyway, check that one out, USA Birds, link in the description below. All right, now the second environmental scenery that I run every day is called Emergency Lights by Southco. And this just adds little blueberries and cherries uh, to the ground scenery, as you can see coming off the, the windshield here. It just adds a nice little touch when you're uh, you know on approach or take off. Just kind of adds a little life to the city. Uh, as you can see, it really doesn't do anything. There's no vehicles here, but when you're coming in, it's just a nice little touch. Uh, it is like a, a $9 app, I think, on Sim Market. Uh, maybe perhaps a little overpriced, 
but it does exactly what it says you know it's not too bad you see we got some blue we got some red some of them will have red and blue yeah emergency lights by Southco uh, next on my list is going to be global scenery and I don't think these need a visual re representation, even though that's precisely what they are. Most people by now know about We Love VFR Region 1 and 2 and Windy Things. All three are available on TO. Uh, they add so much depth to the scenery. Solar panels, wind farms, power lines, uh, waveable flags, uh, you know, wind socks that are better than, than the, the stock scenery. Um, so those are are pretty well known there's no surprise there but I figured they deserved a spot here so that's number eight they're, these are more of global scenery uh, they're called airport lights and new light both available on TO link in the description uh, so new light puts uh, bright lights on a lot of the default Asobo aircraft and a few of the paywares as well uh, and then any of your payware mods that may use the base Asobo aircraft, such as the Analog series by Black Square, um, so that your lights are probably, I don't know, five times brighter than the standard lights, which is really helpful for taxi and landing at some of the remote airstrips. Uh, and then airport lights actually does the same thing, but it does it uh, around the airports. So especially your regionals that may not have very good lighting. So you can see right here in Eugene, you can see how much brighter the terminal looks than normal. In fact, the color temperature is much cooler than the surrounding area. Looks like it's closer to 7,500 Kelvin. And the parking lot's probably like 3,500 Kelvin. So it's a really nice change. Uh, get a lot more visibility again that one is called uh, airport lights on TO in the number six spot I've got uh, global textures and the two that I use every day are the airport textures by Rex real global I think is their official name uh, those are on sim market as well and you can see as we come in here the little flyover you can see all the old tire markings and things on the runway it just looks so cool I really enjoy that add-on uh, it works quite well it doesn't seem to screw up the smaller regional airports and you know make them blacktop or any of those things you may be concerned about it works really well the other app that I run every day is Rex AccuSeason. You can see right now I have it set for fall harvest. Uh, you can go in there and set the density of the trees, the color tone of the trees, and then the actual season that you want to represent. So this looks a little bit on the red side for me on the west coast. Uh, almost makes it look more east coast US to me. So I should probably go in there and tweak it a little bit. But that's the nice thing is it has a little layout generator that you can run and quickly go through and make a few changes and you can update the scenery uh, throughout the year to reflect what it looks like outside. All right, coming in at number five, I've got NeoFly in combination with Sky for Sim Pad. Now the new Sky for Sim Premium just came out and right out of the chute it has interaction with pilot to ATC and it has interaction with NeoFly so I'll go ahead and turn NeoFly on here real quick Fly just took fuel out of my airplane. Oh no! <laughs> Let's go. All you have to do is connect NeoFly, 
and then you've got a page with your active mission, your aircraft condition, engine condition, fuel on board, the nice little reminder that you are within the payload tolerance so that you get full XP for your flight, all those things. It's just a wonderful tool. Sky for SimPad has an amazing new feature as well in the premium version where you can actually import your PDFs. You can see I actually just got cut off by a message from Elena there. It's very nice to have quick access right here in the tablet to my charts. All right, coming in at number four on my immersion list is audio immersion. Audio is super critical to the immersion experience. So I use a conjunction uh, or a combination, excuse me, of ATC Chatter, Pilot to ATC, FS Realistic Pro, and now I have injected Cortana into Pilot to ATC. And while this is definitely not a tutorial video, it's just a general overview, I am going to take a second and show you guys how to inject Cortana into Pilot to ATC because. There is a lot of interest in this out on the forums. My email was blowing up about it this morning because I made a little comment yesterday about how I'm enjoying it. So all you have to do is go to your PC, type in Cortana in the search, excuse me, just type in Cortana, verify that the app comes up. For me, I didn't have to do anything else other than I realized I didn't have it. I went to the store and got it for free. So just do this quick little check. Make sure that it's coming up. And then I'll leave a link in the description to my Discord. And we'll go ahead and pull that up. So you accept the, the invite to my Discord. You're going to go to text channels all the way down here at the bottom. Pilot to ATC. There are two Cortana registry edit files in here. You're going to go ahead and download and then run those in order of reg and then Cortana to reg. And once those are run, you don't need to reboot or anything. You can re reopen pilot to ATC. And then once that step is complete, when you come over to configure voices, you will now have Cortana as an option. The rest of these, James and Sean, all the way through, I, all of them, I've probably got 30 of them, but this is how many I've got installed at the moment. Uh, all of those are done through a pretty basic registry edit that you could look up on YouTube right now and find, I don't know, at least 10 or 15 different videos on how to do that. It's, it's pretty straightforward and easy. With Cortana, because she is injected into the PC as like uh, language, uh, text-to-speech she has like several functionalities as and and her own application as where these are just kind of scripted as uh, text-to-speech the registry files are not edited the same way so just go ahead and hop on my discord grab those two reg files and it will basically through an automated process it will do that for you so that's what that's all about uh, once it's all installed like I said you'll have access to Cortana she works brilliantly in here I run her for almost everything. Uh, I should probably switch it up with more voices to make it more dynamic, but I'm just really enjoying how realistic it sounds, uh, as you saw in the intro. All right, coming up at number three on my immersion list is visual immersions. Now, these two wonderful pieces of freeware uh, I stumbled across not too long ago, and they are AI track and open track. You go to the description below download both of them install them both get them both open to this point and all you've got to do is we are going to start with AI track we're going to configure it make sure that it says use remote open track client which is this guy put this IP address in if it's not already there in port 4242 that's all we're going to do is just verify that your screen matches this I have my camera FOV at 135 degrees. There's about a million YouTube videos explaining why I've chose 135 degrees, but trust me, it is the optimal viewing angle. So you'll set all that, you'll hit apply, and then you close it. And we're gonna come over here to options, 
you can set a key bind. I highly recommend doing it on the right hand side of your yoke because your left is always going to be doing more important things. So I put it on my autopilot disconnect button. I have a Bravo. It can handle that. So the big red ugly button. That is my key bind to toggle this on and off. And it's important to have a good readily accessible key bind for that. So once you've done that, we'll come back over to configuration and we're going to hit calibrate face. And all you're going to do is look right at your camera. You don't have to worry about it too much. You can do this every day or every time you log in or every time your lighting changes. It's a very, very quick process. Bam, it takes a snapshot and you're done. So, as easy as that was, now we are going to start AI track first. Got my face. And now open track is going to communicate to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to hit start. And you can see I have extremely smooth head tracking for freeware. I've used, uh, I think it's Track Noir before. Um, it was okay, but this is on a completely different level. Uh, these guys have done an amazing, amazing job with this program. And you can go into the options and fill around yourself. You can pick up to six different axes. So right now I've got zoom, which is Z. I've got pitch, yaw, and I've even got a little bit of roll. Uh, I turned it down just a little bit. But now you can, you can fill around with it yourself and kind of get comfortable. But it, it just plays super nicely with the simulator. It's very, very smooth. And then, you know, you can hit your key bind that you made on the yoke and look around without getting a headache and causing everybody else around you to get one as well. So there is that. Highly recommend five stars, if you will. Excellent combination of programs. All right, that brings me to number two, aircraft immersion. And this is something I'm really big on. Uh, I have spent literally thousands and thousands of dollars on this game. I know I'm not the only one. If you're watching a video like this, you're probably in a similar boat unless your wife asks you. Um, we we spend a lot of money on this game, and every time some new fancy something Toss, comes out, system test okay. Excuse that. Uh, there are so many temptations when new products come out. I buy almost everything. I would hate to admit. I, I probably have 200 payware airplanes alone. Um, but I'm not doing that anymore because Black Square has changed the game. These two products they've come out with recently with full study level design in them are no joke. The failure systems are amazing. Every circuit breaker works. Uh, as soon as you forget to drop your throttles back before you pitch your props, you're blowing your engine up. It is fantastic. It has taught me so much about checklist flows and the importance of not just hopping in an airplane and taking off. So if you're looking for really in-depth immersion, uh, there's, there's nothing even close to the Black Square products. Of course, I'm speaking for general aviation. The airliners are, are a whole different conversation. But for GA right now, the Caravan and this King Air, they are it. I took everything else out of my community folder. I won't even look at it because to me, that, that stuff is on a different level than this. Um, you know, if, there, if everything has to start somewhere, well, this is, this is what it all culminated to. So can't tell you enough how much I love the Black Square Analog King Air. So along with that, an excellent product that plugs right into the dashboard is the TDS GTN XI. Again, links to all this stuff in the description below. This thing is absolutely amazing. And the number one question I see on the forums is why this over the freeware GTN 750 or even the premium version of that. And while I don't own the premium version of the, the other GTN, I can tell you that there are just little idiosyncrasies in this that I just absolutely love and forgive me if some of these are available on the other one I know it just got a big update but the things I love about this are the taxiways and terminals are all lit up you've always got a compass around you your user configs are endless you can change just about anything that you want in here uh, the fuel planning is actually very very good and 
if you click these two boxes it'll just kind of pick up on what you currently have notice I don't have a destination so we're not going to pick up fuel reporting but when you come back to the main map it's actually I've got it on a key bind on my yoke we'll do this if we were flying it would actually give me a fuel ring in green showing exactly how far I can make it on the fuel that I have it's not picking up right now because we haven't given it all of the information and data. Uh, another amazing thing this thing does, as we're flying, it's always going to give me a little cyan line to the nearest airport. So if we took off for Portland up north of Corvallis here, along the way, it's always going to give me my glide path range based on my speed and altitude and the nearest airport. So if anything happens, I can literally just look at this thing and follow it down to the nearest airport. It's really remarkable. It has navigation data for every click point. Uh, if you click on an airport, you can pull up the waypoint information. You can activate the frequency from here. Um, it's just super helpful, especially in an aircraft of this caliber. Again, that's the King Air Analog and the TDS GTN XI. All right, coming in at number one. As previously mentioned, I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars on this stupid video game that I will defend till my death that it's not a video game, it's a simulator now. Uh, but the number one thing that I have run into while simming, I uh, actually just got last week. To keep in mind, I've got 55 inch 4K TVs at 120 hertz. I've got the Alpha. I've got the Bravo. I've got all of these other little add ons that I've spent outrageous amounts of money on. I even had a 15 key stream deck that I would run my checklist on. And what I ended up purchasing is the Stream Deck XL. And let me tell you, uh, I would buy that before I would buy a yoke if I was just starting out. It's that awesome. The fact that you have every single switch in every single airplane bound, for the most part, uh, there's, there's just a ton of freeware out there on TO, free scripts. So you pair the Stream Deck, Stream Deck XL with Lorby's Axes and O's, and I'll pull that up on the screen as well so you can see what it looks like. So you can see here on the stream deck, what I've done is set up a, a list of checklist flows from before start all the way to shutdown. And all this stuff is editable yourself within the stream deck Excel. So let's say we wanted to go to our descent checklists. I've got a flow in here for descent. And not only do I have the checklist item to knock off once we've completed it, but I also have the associated control in here. So in a linear fashion from left to right, I can operate this plane from start to finish with the stream deck if needed uh, with all the flows that are going to assure I'm not going to miss any steps. Um, and that's the kind of customization you can get. And the other huge benefit to this is I'm not using my mouse. Once I set a few keybinds for my GTN, I can zoom in and out on my yoke without even having to do anything with the mouse. I can control probably 99% of the aircraft. And what I can't control, I have that AI track and open track combination for so that I can get in there and do what I need to do. So anything you can do to eliminate the mouse is going to instantly bring a smile to your face, let me tell you. So before you go out there and spend $600 to $1,000 on an Alpha, Bravo, and then the new Charlie pedals, which I'm still going to be buying here sh shortly, um, really consider the Stream Deck because there is nothing worse than trying to learn a new plane and come over here and get in the right spot and zoom in and then come over only to find out you're like on the wrong angle and it won't pick up on the switch and we just spent like 30 seconds trying to turn the left inverter on when I've got a script that's just gonna say turn the left inverter on actually went to the faster side cockpit because I hit the wrong button. But I think you get the point. Uh, it, 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 hands down, it's the very best thing you can buy for the simulator that I've found. 
So anyway, uh, that is going to do it for my top 10 list. Uh, if you guys have got some other ones that you would like to suggest in the comments below, I'd appreciate it. I know I, I kind of just skimmed off the surface of each of these categories. There's a lot of great stuff out there. But if I was going to narrow it down to 20, 25 mods that I absolutely run every day, the, this is the list. So I uh, look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, and if you could, please take a second to like and subscribe. I'm coming over from Twitch. I took two years off of work to learn how to run this, this simulator and get the immersion going. It was more of a, a self-quest after my father died to learn aviation. And now I feel like I've learned enough that I can start to contribute and give something back to the community besides just doing my Twitch stream. So I'm going to try to do some more videos like this. If you like it, if you guys learned anything, if you found anything you want to try and give me some feedback in the comments, I'd appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.